Greetings. Today I'm going to show you how to do a complete install of Firestarter, Kodi, a complete Kodi config, a Firestarter config and whatever other apps you wish to install at the same time on an Amazon Fire TV. There's a little bit of setup involved but once it's done you can just type two commands into your PC or Mac to do the whole thing. In fact as long as this slot is installed on a computer that's on the same network as the Fire TV you could even do this from the other side of the world by using TeamViewer to control the PC or the Mac. I've not done it from the other side of the world but I have managed to set up a Fire TV stick from 60 miles away that I've never actually seen. This may seem like a fiddly way of doing things for just one Fire TV but if your friends and family see yours in action you can bet they'll end up getting one as well and they'll want you to do everything yours does and I reckon this method is the easiest, laziest way of doing it. There are three parts to this video. The first part takes you through setting up the PC or the Mac. The second grabs an existing config from a Fire TV and the third takes you through a Fire TV install which is dead easy once the first two parts are done. This installation method uses the Android Debug Bridge tool or ADB that comes as part of Android Studio. If you can't get hold of ADB elsewhere, installing Android Studio is one way to get it and at least you know you're getting the latest version from a trusted source. There's a link to the official Android Studio page in the description to this video. If this is how you're going to be obtaining ADB then once you've installed Android Studio plus the Java JDK, not the JRE, the JDK, then just launch Android Studio, click on Configure, then SDK Manager, tick the Android SDK Platform Tools box, untick the rest and click Install. On this screen you can also see where it's going to be installed so you know where to find it. Once that's installed you'll find a Platform Tools folder in that SDK folder. You'll need to drag that somewhere more convenient such as on the root of C drive on Windows or to your home folder on a Mac. So now you've got ADB. What's next? Well, if you're going to install Android apps, you're going to need the APKs for them. So go online and grab them. If an app has an official website or Facebook page, then it's the best place to get that app from. Otherwise, try the APK Mirror website and check any downloaded APK files by using the online virus scanner at virustotal.com to make sure they seem clean and as long as most of the apps most of the virus scanning apps reckon it's okay then you should be all right. Now go to the platform tools folder, create a new folder called install inside that folder and put all of your APKs in there. As you can see I've got quite a few video apps on here plus things like Firefox in case any apps need to make use of a web browser and a very useful Wi-Fi analyzer app. Now let's create a few batch files or scripts that will speed up the installation. With these you'll be able to completely set up a Fire TV with just two commands. I told you it was lazy didn't I? Now in the video description you'll find everything you need to put in these files. So just open notepad on a PC or text edit on a Mac, paste the text in from the video description and save the resulting files in the platform tools folder. In notepad put the file name in quotes otherwise it'll save it as a .bat.txt file instead of a .bat file and that will be a real pain to sort out. On a Mac, once you've saved the files, you'll need to run terminal from the utilities or other menu, type in cd space platform hyphen tools, and then type in chmod 755 install all and chmod 755 Kodi backup to turn the text files you created into runnable script files. What you should now have are two extra files in the platform tools folder. Kodi Backup will take a copy of Kodi's configuration from a Fire TV or any other device you can connect ADB to. It'll also grab Firestarter's backup file if it's there. Install All is the file you'll use the most. This is the file that does all the donkey work of installing the apps and configurations while you're basically doing something else. Now while I'm on the Windows desktop, I'm going to create a shortcut to the command prompt to make it quicker to start next time. To do that I'll search for CMD, right click it, open the folder that contains it and then drag it to the desktop using the right hand mouse button so I can choose to create a shortcut. Now if I right click it and choose properties I can change the folder it starts up in and I want that to be C colon backslash platform hyphen tools and once that's done I can click OK and rename it to something more obvious. That's part one complete. 
You now have all the apps you need to completely set up a Fire TV from scratch, but no configuration files, not yet. If you don't have a Fire TV to steal the config from, then go straight to part three, and once you've set Kodi and Firestarter up exactly how you like them, come back to the next step, which is part two. You've got Firestarter with your single and double press action set up, all the icons in the order you like them, any icons you don't want to see hidden and so on. So let's take a backup of that config. You've got Kodi configured just how you like it as well, but let's trim some of the fat off that so it's quicker to copy. You can skip this step if you wish, but I use the XUnity maintenance add-on to clean the video and music libraries, delete the cache, and delete any package files that are no longer needed. Once that's done, quit Kodi and get the Fire TV's IP address by clicking Home, Settings, then across the System, About, Network. You can get this also from the Firestarter screen, but sometimes it gives you a whole load of garbage and you can't actually see the, um, the IP addressing amongst everything else. Now it's time to head to the computer. Double click on the platform tools icon you created earlier, then type ADB connect followed by the IP address of the Fire TV. Press enter or return and that will link ADB to the Fire TV. Now type in Kodi backup followed by enter or return to run the backup script. This will grab the Kodi config files plus the Firestarter backup file and then disconnect itself automatically at the end. If you're using a Mac you need to run terminal from the utilities or the other menu. Uh, CD into the platform tools folder and then use exactly the same commands but with a dot and a forward slash before them. How long this takes depends on whether you're connecting wired or wirelessly. The example here is over a wired connection and takes about three minutes to copy a 300 megabyte Kodi setup. Now as you can see we have a Firestarter backup file and a Kodi folder. One thing to check in the Kodi folder is that the passwords.xml file doesn't have any of your network passwords in it, otherwise you can end up installing those in the other Fire TVs. If they're in there, just delete them and save the file. That's your backup done. You're now ready to set up as many other Fire TVs as you like, exactly the same as the one you've just done. In other words, part three. If you ever need to update your master copy, just delete the Kodi subfolder and do part two again. Right, let's set up a fresh one. I'm assuming you've already registered the Fire TV and are therefore able to get to this screen. If not, do that first. Now, go all the way to the bottom to Settings, then across to System, then down to Developer Options and enable ADB Debugging and Apps from Unknown Sources. The screen you can see here is on a second generation Fire TV, but the options you need are also there on the first gen Fire TV and the Fire TV stick. Now go back up and go to About and then Network and make a note of the IP address. Now head to the computer. Next time you need to touch the Fire TV remote, it'll all be done. Double click on the platform tools icon you created earlier, then type ADB Connect followed by the IP address of the Fire TV. Press enter or return and that will link ADB to the Fire TV. Now type in install all, followed by enter or return to run the install script. Now the first thing you're likely to see is a bunch of error messages. Some app creators tend to change the internal app names when they bring out new releases, so you end up with the old one and the new one side by side. So all this is doing at the moment is getting rid of the old ones. The failure message just means that the particular app wasn't there so we couldn't delete it. Once this is done, it moves on to the next step. Now this weird little snippet of code basically says that for every APK that's in the install folder, install it with the minus R that forces it to reinstall over the top of anything that's already there. 
and a minus D option, which allows downgrade of an app as well as installation. So if you've already got a newer version on there, it let you actually install the older version over the top. Now, remember what I said about not having to touch the Fire TV? Watch what happens once it's finished installing the apps. These commands simulate pressing buttons on the remote. No need to guide someone through the menu, it's all done automatically. First one just presses the up button to cancel the screensaver if it's running. Then Firestarter is loaded and it's automatically navigated left, down to the bottom, right, down to the bottom again, and finally the import settings button is selected and Firestarter restarts with your custom settings. Cody's config gets copied across now. You can use any of the other apps straight away, but don't run Cody until the copy's finished in a few minutes time, or it'll mess up its settings and you've got to do it again. All done. Time to install all the apps and all the config with nothing else to do. Eight minutes on a wired connection. Got another one to do? Just repeat step three again. Stop press. The latest version of Fire OS 5 brings the apps into your main Amazon TV menu. It's not in the top most recent section, but if you scroll down to apps, you'll find them at the top there. Uh, now, previously, you'd have to go into settings and then manage installed applications, and they'd be buried way down there. So Amazon have now made it a lot easier to actually find them. But, of course, if you prefer the look and feel of Firestarter, there's nothing to stop you carrying on using it. If not, you simply don't bother installing that app. You delete it from the install folder and delete from the batch file all the ADB shell commands, which actually deal with moving the cursor around and uh, launching Firestarter. Hope someone finds this useful. Thanks for watching.